What's up everybody today? I'm going through a quick R script um, that is going to show you how to create one of these correlation matrix heat maps. Uh, it's really quite simple. We're going to be using ggplot2 and uh, one more uh, library called, I believe it's reshape2. Yeah, reshape2 and ggplot2. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and hop into the into our studio and, and get this code going. Oh, wrong thing there. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I've pulled up the tidyverse. Not really using that in this one. Oh, actually, yes, I will be using the tidyverse just at the beginning uh, to pull out the the parts of my data frame that I actually want to use to create this heat map, and then ggplot2 and reshape2. Let's go ahead and load in my data. I'm using this NHL data. Um, just show you what it looks like here. Uh, you've got um, players from NHL teams and they're ranked by points this is from the 2019-2020 season. I uh, scraped this data from NHL.com. I'll link to the video that shows you how to do that below. I did that in Python um, and today we are obviously using R. And I'm just going to pull out uh, some of these columns and then use those uh, to create a heat map. Okay, so I'm going to just come down here and pull out the columns that I think would be interesting to look at. So we'll say my data and then we're going to use um, select. And the nice thing about this, right, we can just tab and we can kind of go through and see, well, maybe we want to include games played. Let's include goals and assists. And we'll also include uh, points. And let's see, that's four. Let's get a few more in there. Points, uh, this is plus minus, which might be cool to throw in there. And then let's also do, yeah, let's do shots on goal. How's that? All right, so let's go ahead and run that. You can see that that removed a lot of the variables. And now we've just got these ones. And these are the ones that we want to um, run correlations on and then get that that uh, heat, map, heat map matrix. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is actually get our correlation matrix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say core mat and we're gonna set that equal to, um, we'll say round, and then core. So this is actually gonna get our correlations. We're gonna pass in my data. So let's go ahead and run that. And then let's just call in head core mat and let's take a look at this. So if you're looking down here in the console, you can see uh, um, we actually have our, uh, ma our correlation matrix now. And we can actually, uh, what we have to do is reshape it. So we're gonna melt it using this reshape library and then we're going to go ahead and use ggplot to plot it. So what we can say is just melted core mat is equal to melt core mat. We'll run that. And then we're gonna go ahead and plot it. So the way I've got our studio set up, it's going to be plotting down here in this bottom uh, right hand corner. So we're gonna call it ggplot. We're going to call in melted core mat. And then uh, inside of our aesthetics here, we're going to say um, X will be equal to var one. Y will be equal to var two. And then fill will be equal to value. And I'm getting var one, var two, and value from this melted core mat uh, data frame here. Oh, and actually it's capital these for var1 and var2. So that's where I'm getting these from. And if I just go back to that really quickly, what you can see is it's actually these correlations. And then you've got the correlation value right here. Obviously, games played correlated with games played is going to give you a one, right? Then it goes to games and games played, assists and games played, and so on and so forth all the way down. So these are all of our actual Pearson's correlation values um, here in this values column. Okay, so then what we do is uh, we just call in the actual plot type to get this, and that is called geome tile. So let's go ahead and plot it. <clears throat> All right, well, there you go. Um, so you can see we've got var variables along X and Y axes. Uh, we've got our uh, the diagonal here, which is all ones because these are the, the variables correlated with themselves. And then over here uh, on the value scale, you have um, the actual level of the um, 
of the Pearson's correlation. Okay, we this is how you do it, but let's go ahead and make it look a little bit nicer as well. You know, I like to throw these this theme classic on. Um, that's my favorite one. All right. So that's pretty good. The other thing that we might uh, consider doing is removing the top half of this because it holds the same information as the bottom half. Now to do that, what we have to do is actually come up here and um, swap a few things out. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to say core mat. Uh, and then what we can do is say upper try and pass core mat into that. So calling out the upper triangle of core mat and setting those equal to NA. You could also do this for uh, using lower.try. So let's go ahead and run these. And then I'll, I'm gonna show you the head of that one without, with the NAs put in. So you can see now we've removed the upper part of that. And now down here what we wanna do, well, let's run this first and see what it looks like. So there you have it. Now you can see uh, uh, it's gray up here. What if we wanted to remove that and make it white? Uh, what, what, what we could do is inside of melt, we could just pass in na.rm and set that equal to true, and that's going to remove na. So let's go back up here and run through this again. Right, and there you have that. Right, and uh, this is basically how you would do this. Right, and we've got the we've got our our diagonal, which are perfect correlations, and then we've got um, a number of things in here. Now, you might not really like this color scheme. I'm not a huge fan of it. Let me pull up the documentation and show you how you, how we can change this. All right, so it's right here. You can use this uh, scale fill gradient two to change these things. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, call in scale fill gradient two. And what we can do is set high, low, and midpoints. So let's say if it's a low correlation, we're gonna want it to be, let's say red, because in this case, it's gonna go from negative one to one, our Pearson's correlations. And let's say we want our negative values to be red. Let's say we want our mid point to be, um, let's just make it white to get some contrast. And then let's make our high value uh, green. Okay. And then we can set a couple other things. So we can say um, the limit uh, will be equal to C negative one to one uh, and then I'm just getting a so let's see yeah our limit is going to be C negative one to, to one and then our uh, midpoint will be equal to zero and then you can also give it a uh, a name you can say name is equal to um, we'll say Pearson let's just say let's just call it the uh, the um, Pearson correlation uh, we'll use a, an escape character here and then we need our plus sign there all right let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like all right, there you have it. So now we've um, we've actually changed our our values here, um, so that we can get a little bit more contrast. Right. So let's zoom in on this and pull it over. This so everyone can see it. So you can see not a lot of very strong correlations. Maybe here between uh, assists and points, obviously, and goals and points, big correlations. Goals and shots on goal, good correlation. If you watched my video on scatter plots, you'll see that correlation as well. But this is just uh, you know the basics of creating one of these. Of course, you can come in here and uh, change the theme and, and make these axes look a little bit nicer. But I uh, just wanted to do a quick video on how to create one of these correlation matrix heat maps in R. Pretty uh, pretty easy, and it's a lot nicer to look at than a, a table correlation matrix. So maybe consider using this uh, in the future. All righty. All right. If you liked that or found it useful, go ahead and like it. Um, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I'm doing a, a bit of a series on data visualization using R, especially using ggplot2. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter. You can find a lot of my code up on GitHub. You can find my academic work on ResearchGate. And of course, you can keep watching me here on YouTube. All right, until next time, keep coding.